we are talking about session five now. So in session four, we gave the students tips as to what to do if their friend is in an abusive relationship, um, giving them empowering um, tools so that they don't feel like they can't do anything. So in session five, we hear the story of Elijah and Zoe. And as I mentioned before, we don't want to use uh, gender normative um, pronouns. When we're talking about Elijah and Zoe, I mean, Zoe can definitely be a guy, you know. Uh, so again, using terms like they are just identifying as, you know, Zoe and not she or he. Once again, this is a lot of reading. Uh, we're seeing both sides, Elijah's side of the story and Zoe's side of the story. So I typically put, again, the story up on the board so that kids can follow along if they catch certain things, um, especially when they're going to have to help Elijah and Zoe out in the situation. After reading these stories, the, the program does mention that we should separate them into groups of three so that way they can actually help Elijah and Zoe in, in the scenario. The best advice I can give you is read your room. What works best for your room? I've done things where myself and my co-facilitator will take on the roles of Zoe and Elijah, and then we, take, we break up the group into two groups, and we'll take them individually. I typically do this if it's a really big group um, or it's a really small group, uh, just so that I can keep an eye on everyone um, and I'm not having to roam around the classroom too much. However, I have tried it the other way where you just split them up into groups of three and they take turns being the friend or, or being Zoe or Elijah uh, just to, to show them that these steps that were mentioned in session four seem easy, but once you get into the emotional stuff, when you get into real life, it can be a little bit harder. It gives them a real life experience. And that's another reason that I like to be take on the role of either Elijah or Zoe is because I can give them obstacles that they may have not have thought of, but that other students have given me throughout my, my teaching career. And then again, just being a friend, making sure that you're letting them know that they do have power. Uh, sometimes we, get, we don't give the youth enough credit to what they can do. So giving them resources now gives them power to, to make a difference in the lives of either their friends, their siblings, their parents, that they don't just have to go to an adult. However, making sure that they understand that there is an adult available if they need that. Um, we either do that by giving them a list of resources, actually talking about who in their own lives they can go talk to. Um, this is a great activity for younger kids or even older kids. Sometimes older kids just don't know who they can talk to. Um, they know that adults are around them, but they don't know who they, they can actually talk to. So either giving them you know, names of like their principal, their school counselor, a religious leader, someone in the community that can just help them, whether it can even be us as facilitators, we can be their trusted adult. So just making sure that they have those resources and they feel empowered is really the key in, the, in this session. And if you guys have any questions as to how to modify, um, how to make it more interactive, please contact any of us who have been on these videos. You can email me. It's Abraham H, A-B-R-A-H-A-M-H, at centrispano.uc.org.